Hey y'all, welcome back to This and That Cuisine. Let's get into it. So today we're making cast iron ribeye steak, mashed potatoes, and steamed broccoli. First, we'll make our mashed potatoes and start off by cutting our two russet potatoes into big chunks. Um, usually, you guys, I'll just take this down the middle as you can see and cut this into big chunks, maybe into six pieces per potato. And if they're too big to fit in my pot, then I'll go down the middle and cut those horizontally to just make those a little smaller to fit in my pot. Depending on how many people you are feeding, you will need more servings. This here is taking care of maybe three servings of people. So just only two potatoes makes three servings of mashed potatoes. After cutting the potatoes, you'll wanna add them to some boiling water that you have on the stove. Here I had about three fourths of this pot filled with water and I sent it to a boil and then added my potatoes. Then I went in with about two tablespoons of garlic to give it a nice flavor. Then I'll leave this alone and let this boil for about 25 minutes you guys while I cut the broccoli. Now if you watched me cut broccoli before you know that it's nice and easy, okay? You'll just grab the stalk of broccoli, cut it down, and then basically cut off the clusters as you see them. As big as you want them to be, you'll basically cut them off. So as I'm doing here, I'm just cutting off the stalks of the broccoli, and then I'm gonna separate the clusters apart. So I'm using three stalks of broccoli here. Um, I wanted to really have maybe two to three servings because me and my honey, we love broccoli, but I don't want any leftovers. I want to be able to cook this meal and be able to cook another meal tomorrow. After you've cut up all of your broccoli and chopped them into nice small pieces, you'll wanna clean the broccoli and add it to a nice big pot. Here I'm using a nice stir fry pot that I like to steam my broccoli in. I've added in a half a cup of water, just a little bit of water to get that steam going, and I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of garlic powder. So after I've added in my garlic powder, then I'll go in with my onion powder. I'll also add in two tablespoons of onion powder as well, you guys, and a little bit of butter, maybe two tablespoons of butter. Y'all, this, Recipe here, listen, this recipe for this steamed broccoli, it is the truth. Garlic powder, onion powder, butter, and a little bit of salt, that's all you need. You're gonna let that steam for about 10 minutes, y'all, and give it frequent stirs throughout the cooking process. So it's been a few minutes and I want to get started with my mix for my potatoes. So I'm adding a half a cup of milk to a small bowl. Then I'll go in with one tablespoon of sea salt. And y'all, I'll let you know this now. Please add this to a microwave safe bowl. We're gonna add in four tablespoons of butter and then we're gonna add this to the microwave for 30 seconds at a time, just to soften the butter, not to boil the milk, just to soften the butter and get that mixed in with the wet mixture. So after I transfer over my mixture to this microwavable safe bowl, I noticed that some of the salt was stuck in the other bowl. So I just added a pinch of salt to the bowl and stuck it in the microwave for about 30 seconds, y'all. Took it out, gave it a nice stir, put it back in the microwave for 30 seconds, not to get the milk boiling, just to get it nice and warm for the butter to melt. Then I just basically mixed in the butter within the milk and the salt, make sure everything was nicely mixed. Now I wanna drain my potatoes that have been boiling for about 30 minutes with that garlic. You guys, after draining these potatoes, do not rinse them. You do not wanna rinse these potatoes. You're just gonna basically scrape them out of this pan here, 
out of the drain pot um, that you're using and get some of the garlic off of them okay you don't want any nice chunks of garlic that many chunks of garlic within your mashed potatoes at least I don't if you would like all of that garlic just take all of it and add it to your pot I'm adding it back to the pot because I am going to put the pot back on the stove and steam some of the water off of those potatoes before I add in my wet mixture Next, we'll sit those potatoes to the side and we'll just check on this broccoli. Look at the broccoli, y'all. It looks so good. It smells so good. It's filling up my house with so many flavors. It's gonna be really, really good as the side dish. I'll sit this to the side since the broccoli is now done and add the potatoes back to the stove to get kind of that water off of the potatoes before I add in my wet mixture. Now, please don't laugh at me, but I do not have a potato masher. So I'm grabbing my biggest spatula that I have, and I'm just going to mash those potatoes the old-fashioned way before a potato smasher was even in existence, okay? <laughs> and y'all, it's fairly easy to smash these with the spatula. You don't have to go buy a potato masher um, like, you know, you see everyone else with. You could just basically use what you have at home. Then I'll add in half of my wet mixture with the butter and the milk and just basically fold that into the potatoes. You'll want to be nice and gentle with your potatoes. It's okay to take your time. There's no rush. So what you don't want to do is overwork your potatoes. You only want to fold those potatoes to the consistency of your liking. You can even add in more of the wet mixture if you'd like. Here, I'm done with my potatoes, so I'm ready to add in my tablespoon of cream cheese. Also, just like mixing in the wet mixture, I'm going to fold that cream cheese into my potatoes and get that all mixed together. So then, after I gave it a taste, I noticed that I just needed a little bit more salt, so I added in a pinch of salt. After adding in that pinch of salt, I gave it maybe two or three more folds, and I was done. Moving on to the next thing. Picked up these two beautiful ribeye steaks from my local Kroger. Y'all, I came home, rinsed them off, and gave them a nice pat down, and then I proceeded to add in my black pepper. Here, I'm using fresh grated black pepper, and y'all, I'm just going to, you know, cover that steak and pepper and pat the pepper into the steak now y'all i am no pro but i've done my research on steak and this method here brings out the flavor in the steak so well please try it so you guys can see as i grate i'm like patting in that pepper to the steak you guys i'm making sure that this steak is covered in pepper on each side I'll even leave a little bit of pepper on the cutting board so I can pick up the steak and just run the rims of the steak on the side and that pepper so they can get a nice flavor as well. After covering both sides of the steak, the front side and the sides of the steak, you'll want to turn it over and do the exact same thing on the other side. And y'all, my camera is always dying on y'all. I'm so sorry. I have to get another battery. But I went ahead and added in blackening season and some garlic powder. Now in a nice hot cast iron skillet, I'm adding in two tablespoons of avocado oil. Just so it can get a nice brown tint on my steak without burning it. And y'all, you do not have to use a cast iron skillet. Those things are very, very expensive, I've heard. But I found this one for about 20 bucks at my local Kroger. <laughs> Seems like I get everything from Kroger, huh? But I do not. Um, I found this one at Kroger for about 20 bucks. Maybe you can as well. If not, um, I'll post down an Amazon link. You guys can purchase one because I feel like everybody should have in a cast iron skillet. So after adding this to the pot, y'all, I let this get nice and hot. Um, I even put my hand kind of over the pot a little bit to make sure that it was hot and then I added in my steak. 
so y'all you can see a little bit at the bottom it's sizzling you can't really hear it over the music but next time when I'm doing one of these steaks I will pause it for one second just to let you guys hear the nice sizzle that it has going on I'm gonna let this cook for five minutes on one side and then I'm gonna be flipping it over for you guys to see all right it's been five minutes and it's time to flip over our steak give me a drum roll please oh my god y'all this steak was the juiciest steak I have ever had and I'm not even I'm not lying okay um, so basically I cooked this steak on five minutes on the other side and you guys if it was a little thinner than this then I wanted to cook it on each side for about three minutes now with two tablespoons of butter I am going to base my steak and I'm going to add in some parsley rosemary and thyme y'all I didn't have any whole garlic cloves you can add those in as well after letting my herbs sit for a second then I'll grab me a small spoon tilt the pan to the side and begin to baste my steak with that butter flavor okay after basting my steak I'll then remove the steak from the pan to a nice cutting board and cut the steak for you guys to see how juicy it came out Now that's what I call a juicy steak. Now it's time to plate our food and get out of here. Thank you guys for always liking these videos and subscribing. I really appreciate it. Thank you also for all of your comments. Oh.